Today, I want to talk just a little bit about the buffer size. This is something that can bring latency into your audio system. This is something that's really important to understand, especially during the recording phase and then as you transition into the mix phase. This is the same if you're using Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, GarageBand. This applies to everything, and there's often a setting which you have to focus on in order to get this right. Now, there's a part of me that wishes that all of these audio companies would just figure out a way to make this invisible to us. Meaning that if I go into record mode, that it does everything it can to make sure that I don't have a delay from what's coming in to what's going out through the system. So here's a, an overview of what's happening. And this is something that if you're a beginner to logic, you'll need to know this because it could mess you up in your performances, especially with MIDI or with audio recording. So inside your preferences under audio, we have our input and output device and an IO buffer size. Now, this could cause some issues for me right now because I'm recording the screen and the audio uh, from my computer into an audio video file right now, but I want to show it anyway and we'll see if we can make it through. The buffer size allows logic to adjust how much room it's giving the software to handle some key tasks. And it uses that space, this buffer, to load information in and out. And um, it takes a little time for it to do it. This is measured in samples. So this is 1,024 samples. And we have uh, six different options down to 32 samples. Now I can record on my good computer uh, down at 32 sample buffer size without too many problems. But a lot of times I'm at 64 or 128 on my Mac mini if I'm doing stuff there. So what does that mean exactly? Well, the, keep in mind what those numbers are. We're going to come out here. I'm going to customize my control bar, switch it into custom. I'm going to turn on my sample rate. You can see now I've got sample rates here that I can choose from. This is 44.1 kilohertz or 44,100 samples per second. This is a part of our digital audio work uh, space. So digital audio in the type that we use inside Logic and most DAWs uh, requires a sample rate and a bit depth. And those are like the scaffolding that we used to digitize our analog signals into digital. Well, this is indicating how many little snapshots of that audio are happening per second. So at 44.1 kilohertz, that means there's 44,100 little pieces of information that happen every single second. And we can actually look at some of those if we zoom in inside our file editor. We'll do that in a second here once my Apple loops pop up, but we can adjust that. And this is really hardware dependent for the most part. Uh, so if I'm using my interface for this computer, let's see, I've got the Steinberg UR22 Mark II. You can see it does all of those sample rates up to 192,000 samples per second. Uh, there's a lot of it, things we could unpack about those numbers, but just to give you some a reference point, 44.1 kilohertz was the standard for CD quality. 48 was the standard for most video formats for a long time. And then we had some of these higher resolution ones, which made it onto some audio formats, but don't get used all that much. For instance, DVD audio uh, could be a higher one. We could have some CD playback or some music playback at higher ones as well in certain systems. But for the most part, anything that you're listening to is going to be at an original sample rate of one of these and uh, or recorded here but downsampled and then uh, encoded or really 
brought down into a compressed data format, which takes it even lower than those. Okay, so let's really quickly, just so you can see this, pull this out into here, look at our file, and we're gonna zoom in. Now right now it's a nice smooth, uh, looks like a line that's just smooth, but if I turn, turn the view into sample and hold, you're gonna see each of the samples right there. So you can see, so this is 29,827 to 29,828 right there. That's one, this is two samples. All of your digital audio is made up of these little stair steps. You might not see it when you look at it more like this, but that's what they are. All of them are like that. Okay, so now how this ties into our buffer size. So if we are at 44.1 kilohertz or even 48, that means 48,000 samples per second. And then we look at our buffer size and this buffer size is 1,024 of those. So it is a measurable amount of time that it takes for this buffer size. So what the uh, question I really wanted to ask and answer is, if you're working with somebody, a musician, who is noticing that there's a delay from when they play on a MIDI keyboard or when they sing into a microphone, and it goes through logic and back out to their headphones, they're gonna hear a small delay at higher buffer sizes. It's just something we, we maybe don't even know how to uh, really vocalize to an engineer as a musician, but there's gonna be something we'll notice. Now, 1024, that's gonna be fairly noticeable for a musician, especially one who knows how to play in time. Uh, even at 512, it'll be slightly noticeable, but maybe they'll be able to get away with it. 256 is better. Uh, 128 is ideal in most systems, especially if other instruments and tracks. And then if you have a really powerful system, you could go down. The other thing to think about, though, is that if you use a higher sample rate, 192, for instance, what happens is, is that now there's 192,000 samples per second which means that each individual sample is a smaller portion of that second. Because instead of 48,000, there's 192,000. And that means that this buffer size is going to be even shorter in terms of time. That means 128 will be even less noticeable uh, or the same for 256, 512, and 1024. So higher sample rates actually equal a smaller delay due to a buffer size. So if you're working with a musician who can actually really tell that in their headphones, then you're gonna be doing this, but you could also be increasing the sample rate uh, so that it's even a shorter delay in the overall system. Now, there's only one time in my career where I, somebody actually really had this nailed down. I was working with a drummer in Tennessee, uh, or from Tennessee. We were actually in North Carolina, and he loaded in his drum kit into the studio. Didn't come in the control room at all at that point. He sat down, and I had literally just pulled open a session and had patched through the headphones to his headphones. And he sits down, and he, like, starts banging on a drum and was listening. He goes, oh, it sounds like you guys are using Nuendo in there. And that was the only time in my life that anyone has ever been able to peg which DAW I was using just listening through headphones. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure how he even did that, but he could. He could. He was, he's an amazing drummer, probably one of the most recorded drummers of all time. And the other thing he said was is that 512 as a buffer isn't going to work. You need to at least get it down to 128. So he could hear the buffer size and knew exactly which one was which. And for me, that was an incredible experience because 
it just goes to show that some people really can tell and it does affect them. So the, the other caveat with this whole thing is that 192 takes quite a bit of processing. And so it's not like any old computer can do it or any old interface. You do need a very robust computer uh, in order to run at the higher sample rates uh, with a nice disk drive. Um, that way you can, well, not even a disk drive, a hard drive. It could, you know, really benefit from having a solid state drive. Uh, that way uh, you have nice ability to put that data down since it's quite a bit more data. Um, but so there are some other factors. But if you really want to have the lowest amount of latency possible and you have a computer that can handle it, then 192 at 32 samples for the buffer is going to give you the shortest uh, amount of time for any system. Okay. Um, yeah, I hope that all makes sense. I hope that the concept of the sample rate uh, being more per second, a higher sample rate is more data per second and how because there's more each of the pieces, it's like speeding it up in a way. Uh, the faster it's going to fit all of that in, it makes each of the individual slices just slightly smaller. And so having that buffer size then, I think it works out a lot better. Okay, so the last thing I want to say is that after you're done recording, um, and we didn't even talk about the low latency mode inside Logic. Um, that's really a discussion that would be tied into this, but um, there's really a few things to think about. Low buffer sizes, as low as you can go without adding clicks and pops while recording uh, is best. That gives you better performances from musicians. Instead of hearing a slight delay and reacting to that and messing up their timing, you're going to get a lot better performances. But after you're done tracking, increase the buffer size for mixing. That way you have the computer can do all of the work it needs to do, gives it more chance to actually process everything without uh, clicking and popping and causing pauses. But if you need to go back and record something later, that's when you would turn on the low latency mode. We'll see if I can turn this on here. So low latency mode is right here and it's this button. And that will deactivate things in your session in order to get to a certain amount of uh, low latency. There are, there's a place in here where we can actually adjust that. And so you can set here um, with low latency mode, how small of a limit you want to get to, how many milliseconds. Uh, and that way you can actually set that up. So that's one way to do this, which gets you there uh, back to enough of a low latency mode to record, even if you have a full session. Again, it's going to deactivate some things, typically like pitch correction and some plugins that cause a lot of delay. Um, and that's it. So keep that in mind. When you're tracking, you want a low buffer so you can have the low latency and the, the much quicker pass through of all the data so that the musician isn't thrown off, but you can increase it as you begin mixing. And then you can use the low latency mode if you need to track something later on. Okay. That's the video. Hope this was useful and I will be doing another video probably later in the week.